hey, super awesome that you're here today. So, after we talked in the last video how awesome unit tests are, let's prepare a project and write some unit tests. Let's go! We will set up a project and then we will use this sample code to write some unit tests for it. Hi, I'm Johannes Frey, but you can simply call me Joe. And I have been working as a software engineer for more than 15 years and I switched to data science and data engineering about four years ago. And I'm here to share the few little things that I picked up along the way. All right, before we start writing unit tests, we need to pick a testing framework. There are two frameworks that are commonly used. One is unit test, which is bundled with the Python standard library. And then there is also PyTest. So let's look first at unit test. As I said, unit test comes bundled with the Python standard library. So with your Python installation and you don't need to install any additional packages for it. But that benefit is also a downside because you get updates only when there is an update in the Python version. So the unit testing framework cannot be updated independently from your Python version. And then there's PyTest. You need to install an additional library for PyTest, for example, using pip. And the benefits are that the code is simpler when you write tests in PyTest. It has a wide environment of plugins that you can use. PyTest can run or execute tests in parallel, which yeah, increase the runtime or decrease rather the runtime of the unit tests so they run faster. And also it can be updated independently from the Python version since it's not bundled with your Python version. And there are scenarios in which one is better than the other. For example, if you cannot install additional libraries, then you can use unit tests. But if you want the flexibility and you have the possibility to install additional libraries, then you can use PyTest, for example. But in the end of the day, it's yeah, a taste thing, whatever you prefer. But in this video, we will be using PyTest. And as I already said, PyTest can be installed, for example, using pip. For that, you can either install it globally or you can create a virtual environment and install PyTest in that virtual environment. And this is what I'm gonna do. So here, we first create a virtual environment and then we run the pip install command to install PyTest into our virtual environment. That being done, the next thing is that we need to create a folder structure for our project and our tests. And there are several different ways in which you can approach that. For example, looking at the PyTest documentation, they talk about two different approaches. One approach where the tests are located next to your Python code. And the other approach is where the tests are located in a separate test directory tree completely isolated from your Python code. Well, again, it's a taste thing, but yeah, I prefer to have the test separate from the actual code. It has also the benefit that when I, for example, need to copy code to somewhere, for example, when I use Terraform to deploy a cloud function or a Lambda, then the tests won't also be uploaded to that cloud function or Lambda because they are in a separate directory and I don't copy that. But again, it's kind of like a taste thing and how you like it most. So with that being said, let's create a folder structure and get going. But before that, a quick shameless plug to go completely insane on that like button. That would really help me out a lot. Thank you very much. So we create the folder structure and I will go for this video with something like that. And with this in place, we can finally start writing our tests. All right, so here we have our code that we want to test. So this is basically a simple business logic that wants to figure out the next business day for the given date. So business day is from Monday until Friday. So if we provide a date for a Friday, it should give us the Monday, since the next day would be Saturday, which is not a business day. The next day after that would be Sunday, which is also no business day. So the next one would be Monday, and then we want the date for that day. So let's write a test for that. First, we create a test file. And now we need to set the imports correctly. So um, how I do it is, that I always um, yeah, append the, uh, the uh, code directory to the system path. Path append and then I provide the 
source directory. And this ensures that I can actually import code from the actual file that I want to test. So now we write a test, test correlation, for example. And now we need to import the method that we actually want to test. So it's from calcul, uh, wait, from calculation import get next without weekends. So now we can call it. And we need to provide a date to it. So for that, I also need to import date time. So let's provide a date for that date time date and then it's 2022. So it's the 6th of May 2022 which is a Friday and since this is a Friday we expect that this method should return the next Monday which then would be um, the time date it's 2022 it's the it's may and then it should be the 9th of may when we now try to run it it does not find a test yeah so i basically forgot to save the file <laughs> sorry for that uh, but now when you go here and then you execute the file then you see that this test passed so now for example let's say that we have a mistake in our implementation so if we have for example an off by one error where we actually yeah, gave it the wrong index so in this case the test would successfully find the mistake and tell us oh yeah the uh, outcome is not the one that you expected because now Saturday is actually also a valid date and um, so the next valid date for the 6th would be then the 7th since Sunday, uh, Saturday is now also valid but we don't want to have that so we fix the mistake make sure that our test behaves like it should looks good cool so now let's also test the straightforward way so when we provide a date that is for example let's say it's Thursday then we expect that the next business day would be the Friday so we expect it to be the sixth since there is no weekend in between when we execute this still passes and is successful. So we know that both cases when a weekend is between the current date and the next business day works correct and we also know that in the case where there is uh, no weekend in between the current date and the next possible date works also correct. So now we have tests in place that ensure that our code behaves like we want it to behave. And as you've seen, it's quite simple to write tests for that. And yeah, it's really beneficial. Uh, maybe a few words about um, how um, PyTest is actually finding your tests. So there is um, a whole page in the documentation which describes how tests are found by PyTest. But a general rule of thumb is when your file starts with test underscore and your method starts with test underscore then pytest will probably find it and execute it so quite simple if you like this video and got some value out of it, it would be super awesome if you could go completely insane on that like button and also maybe leave a comment down below and tell me what you think about unit testing and whether you think about actually doing it thank you very much see you in the next one